Hey guys, Rich Graham here, veteran Navy SEAL, Safari Land Cadre, and the founder of Full Spectrum Warrior. Today I want to talk to you guys real quick about sling management. So there's a lot of different thought processes and tactics and techniques to managing our weapon system when it's on our body transitioning to our pistol or when we're trying to navigate an obstacle or a situation where we have to go hands-on and we need to sling to, to do its job just basically maintaining control of the rifle when it's out of our hands. So we'll talk briefly about how I like to set up my sling right off the baseline before we get into all that other stuff. So before we get into all that, let's just go ahead and make sure we're doing things safely. We already got a buddy check. As you can see, the chamber's clear, the mags are empty, right? So we're not gonna do these dry fire drills with a loaded rifle or pistol. So again, clear, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get into it. We wanna make sure that we're doing safe practices out here on the range. So one of the things with slings, the way I have it set up may be different depending on the different weapon style setups, the different lengths, the different applications. So this isn't the one way to do it. This is how I like to do it based on a normal like battle rifle setup. Personal preference and the environment that you work in may dictate a little bit of this. So this is just my two cents on it, how I like to do it, how it works for me. So. First thing first is where do I hook up my sling? I like to hook to the back of the uh, buttstock here and then on the rail, I like to be ahead of my support hand. So I'm lefty, so in this, on the left side of the rifle, the sling's gonna be coming from the outside. On the right side of the rifle, it's gonna be hooked up, again, just ahead of my hand, which this, when the rifle's sitting, it's pulling the rifle back into me. It's not tipping away or falling away from me, right? It keeps the optic in. Right, this is nice and comfortable for me. When I look at the length, now this is adjustable so I can make it uh, longer or shorter, but how I'm normally running it, I want my length to be, again, my arm coming through so the sling's only around my neck, and I'm gonna put all the way out, and I should have just a little bit of slack at the end. If I have too much slack, then when I go to sling the rifle, it's gonna be hanging way, way down. Right? If I have not enough slack, then when I try to use something like a high ready technique, now I know that's controversial and some places won't let you do that, but let's say in our case, we use a lot of high ready. So when I push out to transition between the positions, I don't want it so short that I'm getting caught and it's hitting the back of my head every time I'm trying to go between those because that gets really annoying and it restricts my movement. So <clears throat> that's kind of how I set the length. Obviously, if I'm going around an obstacle or something like that, I can shorten the sling up, again, making it nice and tight. That way it's not moving around so much, but just for general use, that's how I'm gonna kind of work that length. Now, again, in my setup for my body position, what I like to do here is I like to take my support hand arm and run it through the sling. I know some people like to run it this way where the sling comes under their arm. For me personally, I don't like that. I like my support arm to be through the sling, right? And then from here, what I'm gonna do is instead of my arm being all the way through, I'm gonna take that support hand, I'm gonna bring it in just behind my sling mount to that pistol grip or whatever spot you're holding your hand. And the sling is gonna go just across my tricep behind my shoulder. So in this, the weight is not on my neck. The weight comes across my lat, the outside of my tricep, right? And my elbow is actually right outside of the sling as you can see there. Now, the nice thing with this is why I have the sling mount ahead of my hand is in this position, if I wanna transition to my pistol and let the sling hang, if I simply let go because again, the sling is connected in front of my hand, when I let go, right, I'm inside the sling and it's coming across on an angle on my body. And now I can go to my transition, easy day, to my pistol, no problem. So the other thing with this is <clears throat> when I'm in position, I can also take this elbow, since it's running across the outside of my arm, and if I need to go into a high ready position, right, I just keep that elbow up, and now it's here and it's just around my neck. So this gives me a lot of range of motion. It gives me a lot of mobility. I can come in and out of the sling, 
no problem, transition, right? And I can easily transition back into this position. I have a lot of options when I run it this way. And I can quickly flow through the different options, which I'll show you here in a second. But just to kind of cover why I have it set up the way I do, it is so that I can go high ready, low ready, sling off, sling on, to my front, to my side, behind my back, which I'll show you in a minute, right? And uh, I just have a ton of versatility. So this has been the way that I've found works the best for me, if you wanna give that a shot on your rifle. So now let's look at our first transition position to our pistol. So again, going with that baseline position that I was talking about, we have, again, my arm is coming through, my elbow tucks underneath it, but my hand is still here, so that way, it's on the outside. This allows me to work the low ready and the high ready position, right? And go back and forth with no problem. What I'm gonna do here is let's say I wanna transition to my pistol. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, this hand, again, being behind the sling connection, right? Is just going to basically stay where it's at. So now when I'm in position, I drop the rifle and it lays down right in front of me, okay? Sometimes people will take it and they'll lay it down. I can do that too. It's just personal preference. I can come here. If I lay it down, again, the sling lands in that position that I had to where it's going across my back, right? So the sling uh, pressure is going across my body and not on my neck. Transition my pistol and I'm ready to engage. Easy day. So now when we look at this transition, it's fast. There's very little to do to it. I'm here in position, right? Weapon comes down, I can lay it or drop it. Now, the only thing is when I'm here transitioning to my pistol, if I need to move, right, then my legs can kind of get caught up on hitting my rifle, especially if I'm moving fast. Uh, if I need to take a kneeling position or anything like that, one of the things I need to take into consideration, depending on my barrel length, is that I don't take the barrel and drive it right into the dirt and get my barrel plugged with earth or whatever the material is that we're on. Just something to take into consideration. Fast transition, super simple, right? Restricted range of motion with my legs. Maybe this is a little bit better when I'm stationary, you know, not planning on changing body positions. So here's another option we have for transitioning to our pistol, which gives us a little bit more range of motion. It's still very fast. We're here in position. And now this one, as I go to transition to my pistol, all I'm gonna do instead of dropping it straight down, I'm gonna pull the rifle to my outside, so away from my pistol. So as I bring it down, I just pull it to the side, right? Transition to that pistol, come in, and I'm here. Now I have way more movement, way more freedom with the legs. The gun's not in my way, right? And if I go into the kneeling position, right, I can kind of adjust the angle of the weapon like this so it's not driving into the ground. Does that make sense? Now from here to come back, the gun's not in front of me, so it's just a little bit more of a movement to bring it back in. It's not a big deal, right? It's just a little bit more to bring it back. But again, this one, a little bit longer motion in and out. You can still do it very fast, but this gives us more mobility and range of motion to work with. The third option we have is I'm in position here, okay? I'm gonna do something that needs a lot of mobility or I'm getting ready to transition to the climbing over something to where I need my body to be slick. Maybe I'm gonna have to jump down on the ground and crawl, I don't know. You, but I just need my front to be slick, okay? This is probably the one that you're gonna use the least dynamically. This is more for obstacles, but we'll show it because it's good to know. So I'm here, bang, bang, bang. Right, for this one, my elbow is going to come through, so now my arm is through the sling. If it's not, if it's on the outside, I'll take a moment, bring it in. I can grab the sling mount if I'm not in a rush. And what I can do here is I'm gonna take the sling mount and put it, place my hand on my shoulder. Buttstock comes up, I can place my hand, bring the sling in, right get it nice and comfortable to bring the rifle back and now it just sits across my back like this to get my rifle back all i simply do is grab the stock right i'm going to pull it around 
and it's now back in front. Very easy to do. So I'm in this position again, boom, boom, boom. This is gonna pop up and now I'm just gonna throw it back. Whoop, there it is. And now I'm in position to climb the wall, to do whatever, okay? Grab the stock, bring it back around. So now if I wanna do it a little bit more dynamically and work a transition, it's here. And this time I'm just gonna throw it. It's over, right? And I'm immediately transitioning to my pistol, right? It happens really fast. This comes out, no problem. Okay, coming back. Again, it's just right here and I'm back in front and it's pretty simple. So that might not be my necessarily go-to transition because to get my rifle back online, you know, my rifle's behind my back. So is that where I really want my rifle to be? Well, maybe if I'm doing a lot of movement, maybe it is. If I go into a kneeling position or anything like that, my barrel's up, it's not getting stuck in the dirt, I'm not having to navigate. If I have to go hands-on with someone, right? Like maybe I'll, someone else is giving me a uh, cover support and I'm going to go hands on someone and I know my rifle is going to be out of play. Anything from here moving forward, I'm going to handle with my pistol because of the proximity. Then maybe coming into going hands on, I'm here, I'm walking up, coming in, I'm going hands on and now it's out of the way and my barrel is not getting stuck in the dirt. I go to stand up, step back and I'm back in. So again, it can still work fast. It's just a longer motion. Um, just something to consider. It's an option that we have. Just to throw it out there, you guys can practice all three and then figure out which one works best for you based on your setup and where you're you know, implementing these techniques. All right, guys, I hope those techniques help. Give them a shot. If you're at home dry firing, remember safety first. Make sure your weapon's clear and safe. Don't bring any live rounds into the gym or into your home in the workspace that you have. You know, even if you're putting the magazines in, it helps to have the magazine in so you can get the real feel. But at the same time, we wanna make sure that everything's clear and safe and you're doing it in a responsible way. Check with your shooting range before you start doing these drills and throwing and slinging your gun and make sure that you're able to do so. One of the things to take into consideration is whenever I'm working my sling um, here and before I go to sling, I always attempt to go on safe. So if I sling, I'm hitting the safety as I'm going into that transition, right? If it doesn't go on safe, then that means you had a malfunction, right? So again, even if we're working a malfunction drill, doing these transitions from rifle to pistol, I always attempt to go on safe. So again, just keep those good safety practices, check with the range, make sure you're allowed to do this stuff there and um, you know, just train responsibly. So let us know if these videos help, give them a chance, give them a shot at the range or at your home, and then give us the feedback in the comments section below. There's a ton more that we can go into this and show you how we implement these techniques with obstacles and different scenarios and situations and how we implement them tactically, right? So let us know if this is something of interest and then maybe we'll have more videos coming for you soon. So again, my name is Rich Graham, veteran Navy SEAL, Safari Land Cadre, and the founder of Full Spectrum Warrior.